नमस्ते माई सेल्फ अंकिता श्रेया प्रसाद एंड यू आर लिसनिंग टू अलॉन्ग विथ आ एन सी आर टी इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ ऑडियो वीडियो बुक प्रजेंटेड बाई आर्टिकल पैशन चैप्टर नाइन रे ऑप्टिक्स एंड ऑप्टिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स नाइन पॉइंट वन इंट्रोडक्शन नेचर हैज एंडो द ह्यूमन आई रेटिना विद द सेंसिटिविटी टू डिटेक्ट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स विद इन अ स्मॉल रेंज ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन बिलोंगिंग टू दिस रीजन ऑफ दिस स्पेक्ट्रम वेव लेंथ ऑफ अबाउट फोर हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर टू सेवन फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर इज कॉल्ड लाइट इट इज मेनली थ्रू लाइट एंड द सेंस ऑफ विशन दैट वी नो एंड इंटरप्ट द वर्ल्ड अराउंड अस देर आर टू थिंग्स दैट वी कैन इंटली मैंशन अबाउट लाइट फ्रॉम कॉमन एक्सपीरियंसेस फर्स्ट that is travel with enormous speed and second that it travels in a straight line it took some time for people to realize that the speed of light is finite and measurable it presently accepted value in vacuum is c 2.997924589 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second inverse for many purposes it suffices to take c is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second inverse the speed of light in vacuum is the highest speed attainable in nature the intuitive notation that light travels in a straight line seems to contradict what we have learned in chapter 8 that light is an electromagnetic wave of wavelength belonging to the visible part of the spectrum how to reconcile the two facts the answer is that the wavelength of light is very small compared to the size of ordinary objects that we encountered commonly generally of the order of a few centimeter or larger in the situation as you will learn in chapter 10 a light wave can be considered to travel from one point to another along a straight line joining them the path is called a ray of light and a bundle of such rays constitutes a beam of light in this chapter we consider the phenomena of reflection refraction and dispersion of light using the ray picture of light using the basic laws of reflection and refraction we shall study the image formation by the plane and spherical reflecting and refracting surfaces we then go on to describe the construction and working of some important optical instruments including the human eye 9.2 reflection of light by spherical mirrors we are familiar with the laws of reflection the angle of reflection that is the angle between the reflected rays and the normal to the reflecting surface or the mirror equals the angle of incidence angle between incident ray and the normal also that the incident ray reflected ray and the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence lie in the same plane figure 9.1 these laws are valid at each point on any reflecting surface whether plane or curved however we shall restrict our discussion to the special case of curved surfaces that is spherical surfaces the normal in this case is to be taken as normal to the tangent to surface at the point of incident that is the normal is along the radius the line joining the center of curvature of the mirror to the point of incidence we have already studied that the geometric center of a spherical mirror is called its pole while that of spherical lenses 
is called its optical center the line joining the pole and the center of curvature of the spherical mirror is known as the principal axis in the case of spherical lenses the principal axis is the line joining the optical center with its principal focus as you will see later 9.2.1 sign convention to derive the relevant formulae for reflection by spherical mirrors and refraction by spherical lenses we must first adopt a sign convention for measuring distances in this book we shall follow the cartesian sign convention according to this convention all distances are measured from the pole of the mirror or the optical center of the lens the distances measured in the same direction as the incident light are taken as positive and those measured in the direction opposite to the direction of incident light are taken as negative figure 9.2 the cartesian sign convention the height measures upward with respect to x axis and the normal to the principal axis x axis of the mirror lens are taken as positive the height measure downwards are taken as negative with a common accepted convention it turns out that a single formula of spherical mirrors and a single formula for spherical lenses can handle all different cases 9.2.2 focal length of spherical mirrors figure 9.3 shows what happens when a parallel beam of light is incident on a concave mirror and b a convex mirror we assume that the rays are paraxial that is they are incident at point close to the pole p of the mirror and make small angles with the principal axis the reflected rays converges at a point f on the principal axis of a concave mirror figure 9.3a for a convex mirror the reflected rays appear to diverge from a point f on its principal axis figure 9.3b the point f is called the principal focus of the mirror if the parallel paraxial beam of light were incident making some angle with the principal axis the reflected rays would converge or appear to diverge from a point in a plane through f normal to the principal axis this is called the focal plane of the mirror the distance between the focus f and the pole p of the mirror is called the focal length of the mirror denoted by f we now show that f is equal to r by 2 where r is the radius of curvature of the mirror the geometry of reflection of an incident ray is shown in figure 9.4 let c be the center of curvature of the mirror consider a ray parallel to the principal axis striking the mirror at m then cm will be perpendicular to the mirror at m let theta be the angle of incidence and md be the perpendicular form m on the principal axis then angle mcp is equal to theta and angle mfp is equal to 2 theta tan theta is equal to md divided by cd and tan 2 theta is equal to md divided by fd for small theta which is true for paraxial rays tan theta equivalence to theta tan 2 theta equivalence to 2 theta therefore equation 9.1 gives md divided by fd is equal to 2 md divided by cd or fd is equal to cd divided by 2 now for small theta the point d is very close to the point p therefore fd is equal to f and cd is equal to r equation 9.2 then gives f is equal to r by 
9.2.3 the mirror equation a phrase emanating from a point actually meeting at another point after reflection and or refraction that point is called the image of the first point the image is real if the rays actually converge to the point it is virtual if the rays do not actually meet but appear to diverge from the point when produced backwards an image is thus a point to point correspondence with the object established through reflection and or refraction in principle we can take any two rays emanating from a point on an object trace their paths find their point of intersection and thus obtain the image of the point due to reflection at a spherical mirror in practice however it is convenient to choose any two of the following rays first one the rays from the point which is parallel to the principal axis the reflected rays goes through the focus of the mirror second the ray passing through the center of curvature of a concave mirror or appearing to pass through it for a convex mirror the reflected ray simply retraces the path third the ray passing through or directed towards the focus of the concave mirror or appearing to pass through or directed towards the focus of a convex mirror the reflected ray is parallel to the principal axis fourth the ray incident at any angle at the pole the reflected rays follows loss of reflection figure 9.5 shows the ray diagram considering three rays it shows the image a dash b dash in this case real of an object ab formed by a concave mirror it does not mean that only three rays emanate from the point a an infinite number of rays a magnet from any source in all direction thus point a dash is image point of a if every ray originating at point a and falling on the concave mirror after reflection passes through the point a dash we now derive the mirror equation or the relation between the object distances u image distances v and the focal length f from figure 9.5 the two right angle triangles a dash b dash f and mp f are similar for paraxial rays mp can be considered to be a straight line perpendicular to cp therefore b dash a dash by pm is equal to b dash f divided by fp or b dash a dash by ba is equal to b dash f divided by fp therefore pm is equal to ab since angle apb is equal to angle a dash p b dash the right angle triangles a dash b dash p and abp are also similar therefore b dash a dash divided by ba is equal to b dash p divided by bp comparing equation 9.4 and 9.5 we get b dash f divided by fp is equal to b dash p minus fp divided by fp is equal to b dash p divided by bp equation 9.6 is a relation involving magnitude of distances we now apply the same convention we note that light travels from the object to the mirror mpn hence this is taken as the positive direction to reach the object ab image a dash b dash as well as the focus f from the po pole p we have to travel opposite to the direction of incident light hence all the three will have negative signs the b dash p is equal to minus v fp is equal to minus f bp is equal to minus u using these in equation 
9.6 we get minus v plus f divided by minus f is equal to minus v by minus u or v minus f divided by f is equal to v divided by u v divided by f is equal to 1 plus v divided by u dividing it by v we get 1 divided by v plus 1 divided by u is equal to 1 divided by f the relation is known as the mirror equation the size of the image relative to the size of the object is another important quantity to consider we define linear magnification m as the ratio of the height of the image h dash to the height of the object h m is equal to h dash divided by h and h and h dash will be taken positive or negative in accordance with the accepted sign convention in triangles a dash b dash p and abp we have b dash a dash divided by b a is equal to b dash p divided by b p with the sign convention this becomes minus h dash divided by h is equal to minus v divided by minus u so that m is equal to h dash divided by h is equal to minus v divided by u we have derived here the mirror equation equation 9.7 and the magnification formula equation 9.9 .9. for the case of real inverted image formed by a concave mirror with the proper use of sign convention these are in fact valid for all the cases of reflection by a spherical mirror concave or convex whether the image form is real or virtual figure 9.6 shows the ray diagram for virtual image formed by a concave and convex mirror you should verify that equation 9.7 and 9.9 .9 are valid for these cases as well figure 9.6 image formation by a a convex mirror with object between p and f and b a convex mirror 9.3 refraction when a beam of light encounters another transparent medium a part of light get reflected back into the first medium while the rest enters the other a ray of light represents a beam the direction of propagation of an obliquely incident zero degrees greater than lesser than i and lesser than 90 degrees ray of light that enters the other medium changes at the interference of the two medium this phenomenon is called refraction of light snell experimentally obtained the following laws of refraction first the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal to the interface at the point of incident all lie in the same plane Second, the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is constant. Remember that the angle of incidence I and refraction are, are the angles that the incident and its refracted ray make with the normal respectively. We have sine I divided by sine R is equal to n n2 1 where n to 1 is constant called the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium equation 9.10 is a well-known Snell's law of refraction we note that n to 1 is characteristic of the pair of medium and also depends on the wavelength of light but it is dependent of the angle of incidence from equation 9.10 f n to 1 greater than 1 r less than i that is the refracted ray bends towards the normal in such a cases medium 2 is said to be optically denser or denser in short then medium 1 on the other hand f n to 1 less than 1 r greater than i the refracted ray bends away from the normal 
This is the case when the incident ray in a denser medium diffracts into a rarer medium. Note, optical density should not be confused with mass density which is mass per unit volume. It is possible that mass density of an optically denser medium may be less than that of an optically rarer medium. Optical density is the ratio of speed of light in two media. For example, torpentine and water. Mass density of torpentine is less than that of water, but its optical density is higher. If N21 is the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 and N12 the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2, then it should be clear that N12 is equal to 1 divided by N21. It also follows that if N32 is the refractive index of medium 3 with respect to medium 2, then N32 is equal to N31 into N12, where N31 is the refractive index of medium 3 with respect to medium 1. Some elementary results based on the laws of refraction follow immediately for a rectangular slabs refraction takes place at two interfaces air glass and glass air it is easily seen from figure 9.9 .9 that r2 is equal to i1 that is the emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray there is no deviation but it does suffer lateral displacement shift with respect to the incident ray another familiar observation is that the bottom of a tank filled with water appears to be raised figure 9.10 for weaving near the normal direction it can be shown that the apparent depth h1 is real depth h2 divided by the refractive index of the medium water the refraction of light through the atmosphere is responsible for many interesting phenomena for example, the sun is visible a little before the actual sunrise and until a little after the actual sunset due to refraction of light through the atmosphere. Figure 9.11 By actual sunrise, we mean the actual crossing of the horizon by the sun. Figure 9.11 shows the actual and apparent position of the sun with respect to the horizon. The figure is highly exaggerated to show the effect. The refractive index of air with respect to vacuum is 1.00029 due to this. The apparent shift in the direction of the sun is by about half a degree and the corresponding time difference between actual sunset and apparent sunset is about 2 minutes. See example 9.5. The apparent flattening oval shape of the sun at sunset and sunrise is also due to the same phenomenon. Figure 9.11. Advanced sunrise and delayed sunset due to atmospheric refraction. 9.4. Total internal reflection. When light travels from an optically denser medium to a rarer medium at the interference it is partially reflected back into the same medium and partially refracted to the second medium this reflection is called the internal reflection when a ray of light enters from a denser medium to a rarer medium it bends away from the normal for example the ray a o 1 b in figure 9.12 the Incident ray AO1 is partially reflected O1C and partially transmitted O1B or refracted the angle of reflection are being larger than the angle of incidence I. As the angle of incidence increases, so does the angle of refraction. 
till for the ray AO3 the angle of refraction is pi by 2. The refracted ray is bent so much away from the normal that it grazes the surface at the interfaces between the two media. This is shown by the ray AO3 dn figure 9.12. If the angle of incidence is increased still further, example the ray AO4 refraction is not possible and the incident ray is totally reflected. This is called total internal reflection. When light gets reflected by a surface, normally some fraction of it get transmitted. The reflected ray therefore is always less intense than the incident ray. Howsoever smooth the reflecting surface may be in total internal reflection, on the other hand, no transmission of light takes place. The angle of incidence corresponding to an angle of refraction 90 degrees say angle AO3N is called the critical angle IC for the given pair of media. We see from Snell's law equation 9.10 that if the refractive ref relative refractive index of the refracting medium is less than 1 then since the maximum value of sin r is unity there is an upper limit to the value of sin i for which the law can be satisfied that is i is equal to ic such that sin ic is equal to n21 for values of i larger than ic snell's law of refraction cannot be satisfied and hence no refraction is possible the refractive index of denser medium 1 with respect to rarer medium 2 will be n12 is equal to 1 divided by sin ic some typical critical angles are listed in table 9.1 table 9.1 critical angle of some transparent media with respect to a water chrome glass dun flint glass diamond a demonstration for total internal reflection all the optical phenomenon can be demonstrated very easily with the use of a laser torch or pointer which is easily available nowadays take a glass beaker with clear water in it add a few drops of milk or any other suspension to water and stir so that water becomes a little turbid take a laser pointer and shine it's been through the turbid water you will find that the path of the beam inside the water shines brightly shine the beam from below the beaker such that it strikes at the upper water surface at the other end do you find that it undergoes partial reflection which is seen as a spot on the table below and partial refraction which comes out in the air and is seen as a spot on the roof figure 9.13a now direct the laser beam from one side of the beaker such that it strikes the upper surface of water more obliquely figure 9.13b adjust the direction of laser beam until you find the angle for which the refraction above the water surface is totally absent and the beam is totally reflected back to water this is total internal reflection at its simplest put the water in a long test tube and shine the laser light from top as shown in figure 9.13 c adjust the direction of the laser beam such that it is totally internally reflected every time it strikes the walls of the tube this is similar to what happens in optical fibers take care not to look into the laser beam directly and not to point it at anybody's face 9.4.1 total internal reflection in nature and its technological applications first 
mirage on hot summer days the air near the ground becomes hotter than the air at higher levels the refractive index of air increases with its density hotter air is less dense and has smaller refractive index than the cooler air if the air currents are small that is the air is still the optical density at different layers of air increases with height as a result light from a tall object such as a tree passes through a medium whose refractive index decreases towards the ground thus a ray of light from such an object successively bends away from the normal and undergo total internal reflection if the angle of incidence for the air near the ground exceeds the critical angle this is shown in figure 9.14b to a distant observer the light appears to be coming from somewhere below the ground the observer naturally assumes that light is being reflected from the ground say by a pool of water near the tall object such inverted images of tall objects cause an optical illusion to be the observer this phenomenon is called mirage this type of mirage is especially common in hot deserts some of you might have noticed that while moving in a bus or a car during a hot summer days a distinct patch of road especially on a uh, highways appears to be wet but you do not find any evidence of wetness when you reach the spot this is also due to mirage figure 9.14 a a tree is seen by an observer at its place when the air above the ground is at uniform temperature b when the layers of air closest to the ground have varying temperature with hottest layer near the ground light from a distant tree may undergo total internal reflection and the apparent image of the tree may create an illusion to the observer the tree is near a pool of water second diamond diamonds are known for their spectacular brilliance their brilliance is mainly due to the total internal reflection of light inside them the critical angle of diamond air interface is equivalent to when 4.4 degrees is very small therefore once light enters a diamond it is very likely to undergo total internal reflection inside it diamonds found at nature really exhibit the brilliance for which they are known it is the technical skill of diamond cutter which makes diamonds to sparkle so brightly by cutting the diamond suitably multiple total internal reflection can be made to occur third prism prisms designed to bend light by 90 degrees or by 180 degrees make use of total internal reflection figure 9.15a and b such a prism is also used to invert images without changing their size figure 9.15c in the first two cases the critical angle i see for the material of the prism must be less than 45 degrees we see from table 9.1 that this is true for both chrome glass and dense flint glass fourth optical fibers nowadays optical fibers are extensively used for transmitting audio and video signals through long distances optical fibers to make use of the phenomenon of total internal reflection optical fibers are fabricated with high quality composite glass parts fibers each fiber consists of a core and cladding the refractive index of the material of the core is higher than that of cladding when a signal in the form of light is directed at 
one end of the fiber a suitable angle it undergoes repeated total internal reflections along the length of the fiber and finally comes out at the other end figure 9.16 since light undergo total internal reflection at each stage there is no appreciable loss in the intensity of the light signal optical fibers are fabricated such that light reflected at one side of inner surface strike the other at an angle larger than the critical angle even if the fiber is bent light can easily travel along its length thus an optical fibers can be used to act as an optical pipe a bundle of optical fibers can be put to several uses optical fibers are extensively used for transmitting and receiving electrical signals which are converted to light by suitable transducers observably optical fibers can also be used for transmission of optical signals for example these are used as a light pipe to facilitate visual examination of internal organs like esophagus stomach and intestines you might have seen a commonly available decorative lamp with fine plastic fibers with their free ends forming a fountain like structure the other end of the fibers is fixed over an electric lamp when the lamp is switched on the light travels from the bottom of each fiber and appears at the tip of its free end as a dot of light the fibers in such decorative lamps are optical fibers the main requirement in the fabricating optical fibers is that there should be very little absorption of light as it travels for long distances inside them this has been achieved by purification and special preparation of materials such as quartz in silica glass fibers it is possible to transmit more than 95% of the light over a fiber length of 1 km compared with what you expect for a block of ordinary window glass 1 km thickness 9.5 refraction at spherical surfaces and by lenses we have so what considered refraction at a plane interface we shall now consider refraction at a spherical interface between two transparent media and infinite decimal part of the spherical surface can be regarded as planar and the same laws of refraction can be applied at every point on the surface just as for reflection by spherical mirror the normal at the point of incidence is perpendicular to the tangent plane to the spherical surface at the point and therefore passes through a center of curvature we first consider refraction by a single spherical surface and follow it by thin lenses a thin lenses is transparent optical medium bounded by two surfaces at least one of which should be spherical applying the formula for image formation by a single spherical surface successively at the two surfaces of a lens we shall obtain the lens makers formula and then the lens formula 9.5.1 refraction at spherical surface figure 9.17 shows the geometry of formation of image i of an object o on the principal axis of a spherical surface with center of curvature c and radius of curvature r the rays are incident from medium of refractive index n1 to another of refractive index n2 as before we take the aperture or the lateral size of the surface to be small compared to other distances involved so that small angle approximation can be made in particular nm may be taken to be nearly equal to the length of the perpendicular from the point n on the principal axis we have for small angles tan angle nom is equal to 
एम एन बाई ओ एम टन एंगल एन सी एम इज इक्वल टू एम एन बाई एम सी टन एंगल एन आई एम इज इक्वल टू एम एन डिवाइडेड बाई एम आई नाउ फॉर ट्राइंगल एन ओ सी आई इज द एक्सटीरियर एंगल देर फॉर आई इज इक्वल टू एंगल एन ओ एम प्लस एंगल एन सी एम आई इज इक्वल टू एम एन प्लस ओ एम प्लस एम एन बाई एम सी सिमिलरली आर इज इक्वल टू एंगल एन सी एम माइनस एंगल एन आई एम दट इज आर इज इक्वल टू एम एन डिवाइडेड बाई एम सी माइनस एम एन डिवाइडेड बाई एम आई नाउ बाई स्नेल्स रॉ एन वन साइन आई इज इक्वल टू एन टू साइन आर और फॉर स्मॉल एंगल्स एन वन आई इज इक्वल टू एन टू आर substituting i and r from equation 9.13 and 9.14 we get n1 by om plus n2 by my is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by mc here om mi and mc represent magnitudes of distances applying the cartesian sign convention om is equal to minus u एम आई इज इक्वल टू प्लस बी एम सी इज इक्वल टू प्लस आर सब्सिट्यूटिंग दिस इन इक्वेशन नाइन पॉइंट वन फाइव वी गेट एन टू बाई बी माइनस एन वन बाई यू इज इक्वल टू एन टू माइनस एन वन बाई आर इक्वेशन नाइन पॉइंट वन सिक्स गिव्स अस अ रिलेशन बिटवीन ऑब्जेक्ट एंड इमेज डिस्टेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द मीडियम and the radius of curvature of the curved spherical surface it holds for any curved spherical surfaces 9.5.2 refraction by a lens figure 9.188 shows the geometry of image formation by double convex lens the image formation can be seen in terms of two steps first the first refracting surface forms the image i1 of the object o figure 9.18b the image i1 act as virtual object for the second surface that forms the image at i figure 9.18c applying equation 9.15 to the first interface abc we get n1 by ob plus n2 by b i 1 is equal to n 2 minus n 1 by b c 1 a similar procedure applied to the second interface a d c gives minus n 2 by d i 1 plus n 1 by d i is equal to n 2 minus n 1 by d c 2 note that now the refractive index of the medium on the right side of adc is n1 while on its left is n2 for the di1 is negative as the distance is measured against the direction of incident light for a thin lens bi1 is equal to di1 adding equation 9.17 and 9.18 we get n1 by ob n1 by di is equal to n2 minus n1 1 divided by bc1 plus 1 divided by dc2 suppose the object is at infinity that is ob is infinity and di is equal to f equation 9.19 gives n1 divided by f is equal to n2 minus n1 n2 1 by bc1 plus 1 by dc2 the point where image of an object placed at infinity is formed is called the focus f of the lens and the distance f gives its focal length a lens has two foci f and f dash on either side of it figure 9.19 by the sign convention dc1 is equal to plus r1 dc2 is equal to minus r2 So equation 9.20 can be written as 1 by f is equal to n21 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. That is, n21 is equal to n2 
डिवाइडेड बाई एन वन इक्वेशन नाइन पॉइंट वन टू वन इज नोन एज द लेंस मेकर्स फॉर्मूला इट इज यूजफुल टू डिजाइन लेंसेज ऑफ डिजाइड फोकल लेंस यूजिंग सर्फेसेस ऑफ सूटेबल रेडियाई ऑफ कर्वेचर नोट दट द फॉर्मूला इज ट्रू फॉर अ कॉन्वेक lens also in that case r1 is negative r2 positive and therefore f is negative from equation 9.19 and 9.20 we get n1 by ob plus n1 by di is equal to ni by f again in the thin lens approximation b and d are both close to optical center of the lens applying the sign convention B O is equal to minus U, D I is equal to plus V. We get one by B minus one by U is equal to one by F. Equation nine point two three is similar thin lens formula. Through we derived it for a real image formed by a convex lens. The formula is valid for both convex as well as concave lenses and for both real and virtual images. It is worth mentioning that the two For C, F and F dash of a double convex or concave lens are equidistant from the optical center. The focus on the side of the original source of light is called the first focal point, whereas the other is called the second focal point. To find the image of an object by a lens, we can. in principle take any two rays emanating from a point on an object trace their paths using the laws of refraction and find the point where the refracted rays meet or appear to meet in practice however it is convenient to choose any two of the following rays first a ray emanating from the object parallel to the principal axis of the lens after refraction passes through the second principal focus f dash in a convex lens or appears to diverge in a concave lens from the first principal focus f second a ray of light passing through the optical center of the lens emerges without any deviation after refraction third a a ray of light passing through the first principal focus of a convex lens figure 9.19a emerges parallel to the principal axis after refraction b a ray of light incident on a concave lens appear to meet the principal axis a second focus point emerges parallel to the principal axis after refraction figure 9.19 b figure 9.19a and b illustrate these rules for a convex and a concave lens respectively you should practice drawing and similar ray diagrams for different position of the object with respect to the lens and also verify that the lens formula equation 9.23 holds good for all cases here again it must be remembered that each point on an object gives out infinite number of rays all these rays will pass through the same image point after refraction at the lens magnification m produced by a lens is defined like that of a mirror as the ratio of the size of the image to that of the object proceeding in the same way as for spherical mirrors it is easily seen that for a lens m is equal to h dash by h is equal to v by u when we apply the sign convection we see that for erect and virtual image formed by convex or concave lens m is positive while for an inverted and real image m is negative 9.5.3 power of a lens power of a lens is a measure of convergence or divergence which a lens introduces in the light falling on it clearly a lens of shorter focal lens blends the incident light more while converging it in case of a convex lens and diverging it in case of a concave lens the power p of a lens is defined as the tangent of 
the angle by which it converges or diverges a beam of light parallel to the principal axis falling at unit distance from the optical center figure 9.20 tan theta is equal to h by f if h is equal to 1 tan delta is equal to 1 by f or delta is equal to 1 by f for small value of delta thus p is equal to 1 by f the si unit of power of a lens is diopter d when d is equal to 1 meter to the power of minus 1 the power of a lens of focal length of 1 meter is 1 diopter power of a lens is positive for converging lens and negative for diverging lens thus when an optical prescribes a corrective lens of power plus 2.5 diopter the required lens is a convex lens of focal length 40 centimeter a lens of power of 4 minus 4.0 d means a concave lens of focal length minus 25 centimeter 9.5.4 combination of thin lens in contact consider two lens a and b of focal length f1 and f2 placed in contact with each other let the object be placed at a point o beyond the focus of the first lens a figure 9.21 the first lens produces an image at i1 since image i1 is real it serves as a virtual object for the second lens B producing the final image at I. It must however be borne in mind the formation of image by the first lens is presumed on to facilitate determination of the position of the final image. In fact, the direction of rays emerging from the first lens gets modified in accordance with the angle at which they strike the second lens. Since the lenses are thin, we assume the optical center of the lens to be coincident. Let this central point be denoted by P. For the image formed by the first lens A, we get 1 by V1 minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F1. For the image formed by the second lens B, we get 1 by V minus 1 by V1 is equal to 1 by F2. Adding equation 9.27 and 9.28, we get 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F1 plus 1 by F2. If the two lens system is regarded as equivalent to a single lens of focal length f we have 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f so that we get 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 the derivation is valid for any number of thin lenses in contact if several thin lenses of focal length f1 f2 f3 and so on in contact the effective focal length of their combination is given by 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 plus 1 by f3 and so on. In terms of power, equation 9.31 can be written as p is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 and so on. Where p is the net power of the lens combination, note that the sum and equation 9.32 is an algebraic sum of the individual powers. So, some of the terms on the right side may be positive. For convex lenses and some negative for concave lenses. Combination of lenses helps to obtain diverging or converging lenses of design magnification. It also enhances sharpness of the image. Since the image formed by the first lens becomes the object for the second. Equation 9.25 implies that the total magnification M of the combination is a product of magnification M1, M2, M3 and so on of individual lenses. M is equal to M1, M2, M3 and so on. Such a system of combination of lenses is commonly used in 
designing lenses for cameras, microscopes, telescopes and other optical instruments. 9.6 Refraction through a prism Figure 9.23 shows the passage of light through triangular prism ABC diagonal of incidence and refraction at the first phase AB are I and R1 while the angle of incidence from glass to air at the second phase AC is R2 and the angle of refraction of emergence E the angle between the emergent ray RS and the direction of the incident ray PQ is called the angle of deviation delta. In the bilateral AQ and R, two of the angles at the vertices Q and R are the right angles. Therefore, the sum of the other angles of the quadrilateral is 180 degrees. Angle A plus angle Q and R is equal to 180 degrees. From the triangle Q and R, R1 plus R2 plus angle Q and R is equal to 180 degrees. Comparing these two equations, we get R1 plus R2 is equal to A. The total deviation delta is the sum of deviation at the two faces. Delta is equal to I minus R1 plus E minus R2. That is, delta is equal to I plus E minus A. Thus, the angle of deviation depends on the angle of incidence. A plot between the angle of deviation and angle of incidence is shown in figure 9.24. You can see that in general, any given value of delta except for I is equal to E corresponds to two value that is and hence of E. This in fact is expected from the symmetry of I and E in equation 9.35 that is delta remains the same if I and E are interchanged. Physically this is related to the fact that the path of ray in figure 9.23 can be traced back resulting in the same angle of deviation at the minimum deviation dm the refracted ray inside the prism becomes parallel to its base we have delta is equal to dm i is equal to e which implies r1 is equal to r2 equation 9.34 gives r2r is equal to a or r is equal to a by 2 in the same way equation 9.35 gives dm is equal to 2i minus a or i is equal to a plus dm divided by 2. The refractive index of the prism is n21 n2 by n1 is equal to sin a plus dm by 2 divided by sin a by 2. The angles a and dm can be measured experimentally. Equation 9.38 thus provides a method of determining refractive index of the material of the prism. For a small angle prism that is a thin prism, dm is also very small and we get n21 sin a plus dm divided by 2 divided by sin a by 2 equivalence to a plus dm by 2 divided by a by 2. dm is equal to n21 minus 1 into a. It implies that thin prism do not deviate light much. 9.7 Some natural phenomena due to sunlight N. The interplay of light with things around us gives rise to several beautiful phenomena. The spectaculars of colors that we see around us all the time is possible due to sunlight. While studying this portion of visible or white light by a prism class 10th and the electromagnetic spectrum chapter 8 class 7th we got to know that color is associated with the frequency of light or the wavelength of light in the given medium in the visible spectrum red light is at the long wavelength end 700 nanometer while the Violet light is at the short wavelength and 400 nanometer. Dispersion takes place because the refractive index of medium for different frequencies colors is different. For example, the blending of red component of white light is least 
while it is most for the violet. Equivalently, red light travels faster than violet light in a glass prism. Table 9.2 gives the refractive indices for different wavelengths for crown glass and flint glass. Thick lenses could be assumed as made of many prisms. Therefore, thick lenses show chromatic abbreviations due to dispersion of light. When white light passes through thick lenses, red and blue color of focus at different points, this phenomenon is as chromatic abbreviation. Table 9.2 refractive indices for different wavelengths, violet, blue, yellow and red. The variation of refractive index with wavelength may be more pronounced in some media than the other. In vacuum, of course, the speed of light is independent of wavelength, thus vacuum or air approximately is a non-dispersive medium in which all colors travel with the same speed. This also follows from the fact that sunlight reaches in the form of white light and not as its components. On the other hand, glass is a dispersive medium. The blue of the sky, white clouds, the red hue at sunrise and sunset, the rainbow, the brilliant colors of some pearls, shells and wings of birds are just a few of the natural wonders we are used to. We describe some of them here from the point of view of physics. 9.7.1 The Rainbow The rainbow is an example of dispersion of sunlight by the water drops in the atmosphere. This is a phenomenon due to combined effect of dispersion, refraction and reflection of sunlight by spherical water droplets of rain. The conditions for observing the rainbow are that the sun should be shining in one part of the sky, say near western horizon, while it is shining in the opposite part of the sky, say eastern horizon. An observer can therefore see a rainbow only when his back is towards the sun. In order to understand the formation of rainbow, consider figure 9.25a. Sunlight is first refracted as it enters a raindrop which causes the different wavelengths colors of white light to separate. Longer wavelength of light red are bent the least while the shorter wavelength violet are bent the most. Next, this component ray strikes the inner surface of the water drop and get internally reflected if the angle between the refracted ray and normal to the drop surface is greater than the critical angle 48 degree in this case the reflected light is refracted again when it comes out of the drop as shown in the figure it is found that the violet light emerges at an angle of 40 degrees related to the incoming sunlight and red light emerges at an angle of 42 degrees. For other colors, angles lie in between these two values. Figure 9.25b explains the formation of primary rainbow. We see that red light from drop 1 and violet light from drop 2 reaches the observer's eyes. The violet from the drop 1 and the red light from drop 2 are directed at level above or below the observer. Thus, the observer sees a rainbow with red color on the top and violet on the bottom. The primary rainbow is a result of three-step process that is refraction, reflection and refraction. Figure 9.25 Rainbow A. The sun incident on the water droplet get refracted twice and reflected internally by a drop. B. Enlarge view of the internal reflection and refraction of a ray of light inside a drop forming primary rainbow. And C. Secondary rainbow is formed by rays undergoing internal reflection twice inside the drop. When Light rays undergo two internal reflections inside a raindrop instead 
of 1 as in the primary rainbow a secondary rainbow is formed as shown in figure 9.25 c it is due to four steps process the intensity of light is reduced at the second reflection and hence the secondary rainbow is fainter than the primary rainbow further the order order of the colors is reversed in it as is clear from figure 9.25 c 9.7.2 scattering of light as sunlight travels through the earth's atmosphere it gets scattered changes its direction by the atmospheric particles light of shorter wavelengths is scattered much more than light of longer wavelengths the amount of scattering is inversely proportional to the fourth power of wavelength this is known as ray like scattering hence the bluish color of predominates in a clear sky since blue has a shorter wavelength than red and is scattering much more strongly in fact violet gets scattered even more than blue having a shorter wavelength but since our eyes are more sensitive to blue than violet we see the sky blue large particles like dust and water droplets present in the atmosphere behave differently the relevant quantity here is the relative size of the wavelength of light lambda and the scatterer of typical size say a for a less than lambda one has ray light scattering which is proportional to 1 by lambda to the power of 4 for a greater than lambda that is large scattering objects for example raindrops large dust or ice particles this is not true all wavelengths are scattered nearly equally thus clouds which have droplets of water with a greater than lambda are generally white at sunset or sunrise the sun's rays have to pass through a larger distance in the atmosphere figure 9.26 most of the blue and other shorter wavelengths are removed by scatterings the least scattered light reaching our eyes therefore the sun looks reddish this explains the reddish appearance of the sun and full moon near the horizon 9.8 optical instruments a number of optical devices and instruments have been designed utilizing reflecting and refracting properties of mirrors lenses and prisms periscope kaleidoscope binoculars telescopes microscopes are some examples of optical devices and instruments that are in common use our eye is of course one of the most important optical devices the nature has endowed us with we have already studied about the human eye in class 10th we now go on to describe the principle of working of the microscope and the telescope 9.8.1 the microscope the simple magnifier or microscope is a converging lens of small focal length figure 9.27 in order to use such a lens as a microscope the lens is held near the object one focal length away or less and the eye is positioned close to the lens on the other side the idea is to get an erect magnified and virtual image of the object at a distance so that it can be viewed comfortably that is at 25 cm or more if the object is at a distance f the image is at infinity however if the object is at a distance slightly less than the focal length of the lens the image is virtual and closer than infinity although the closest comfortable distance for viewing the image is when it is at the near point distance the equivalence to 25 cm it causes some strain on the eye therefore the image formed at infinity is often considered more suitable for viewing by the relaxed eye we show both cases 
the first in figure 9.27a and the second in figure 9.27b and c the linear magnification m for the image formed at the near point d by a simple microscope can be obtained by using the relation m is equal to v by u is equal to v into 1 by v minus 1 by f is equal to 1 minus v by f now according to our sign convention v is negative and is equal in magnitude to d thus the magnification is m is equal to 1 plus d by f since d is about 25 centimeter to have a magnification of 6 1 is a convex lens of focal length f is equal to 5 centimeter note that m is equal to h dash by h where h is the size of the object and h dash the size of the image this is also the ratio of the angle subtended by the image to the that subtended by the object if placed at d from comfortable viewing note that this is not the angle actually subtended by the object at i which is s divided by u what a single lens simple magnifier achieves is that it allows the object to be brought closer to the i than d we will now find the magnification when the image is at infinity in this case we will have to obtain the angular magnification suppose the object has a height h the maximum angle it can subtend it and be clearly visible without a lens is when it is at the near point that is at distance d the angle subtended is then given by tan theta is equal to s divided by d equivalence to theta naught we now find the angle subtended at the angle by the image when the object is at u from the relation h dash by h is equal to m v by u we have the angle subtended by the image tan theta i is equal to h dash divided by minus v is equal to h by minus v into v by u is equal to h divided by minus u equivalence to theta the angle subtended by the object when it is at u is equal to minus f theta i is equal to s divided by f as is clear from figure 9.27c the angular magnification is therefore m is equal to theta i divided by theta naught is equal to d by f this is one less than the magnification when the image is at the near point equation 9.39 but the viewing is more comfortable and the difference in magnification is usually small the subsequent discussion of optical instruments microscope and telescope we shall assume the image to be infinity a simple microscope has a limited maximum magnification that is less than 9 for realistic focal lens for much larger magnification one uses two lenses one compounding the effect of the other this is known as a compound microscope a schematic diagram of a compound microscope is shown in figure 9.28 the lens nearest the object called the objective forms a real inverted magnified image of the object this serves as the object for the second lens the eyepiece which functions essentially like a simple microscope or magnifier produces the final image which is enlarged and virtual the first inverted image is the near at or within the focal plane of the eyepiece at a distance appropriate for final image formation at infinity or a little closer for image formation at the near point clearly the final image in is inverted with respect to the original object we now obtain the magnification due to a compound microscope the ray diagram of figure 9.28 shows that the linear magnification due to the objective namely h dash divided by h equals m o is equal to h dash by h is equal to l divided by f naught where we have used the result tan beta is equal to h divided by f naught is equal to h dash divided by l 
here h dash is the size of the first image the object size being h and f not being the focal length of the objective the first image is formed near the focal point of the eyepiece the distance l that is the distance between the second focal point of the objective and the first focal point of the eyepiece focal length fe is called the tube length of the compound microscope as the first inverted image is near the focal point of the eyepiece we use the result from the discussion above for the simple microscope to obtain the angular magnification me due to it equation 9.39 when the final image is formed at the near point is me is equal to 1 plus d divided by fe when the final image is formed at infinity the angular magnification due to the eyepiece equation 9.42 is me is equal to d divided by fe thus the total magnification according to equation 9.33 when the image is formed at infinity is m is equal to m not me is equal to l divided by f not into d divided by fe clearly to achieve a large magnification of a small object hence the name microscope the objective and eyepiece should have small focal lengths in practice it is difficult to make the focal length much smaller than 1 cm also large lenses are required to make l large for example with an objective with f not is equal to 1.0 cm and an eyepiece with focal length fe is equal to 2.0 cm and a tube lens of 20 cm the magnification is m is equal to m not me is equal to l divided by f not into d divided by fe is equal to 20 divided by 1 into 25 divided by 2 is equal to 250 various other factors such as illumination of the object contribute to the quality and visibility of the image in modern microscope multi component lenses are used for both the objective and the eyepiece or to improve image quality by minimizing various optical aberrations defects in lenses 9.8.2 telescope the telescope is used to provide angular magnification of distant objects figure 9.29 it also as an objective and an eyepiece but here the objective has larger focal length and a much larger aperture than the eyepiece light from distant object enters the objective and a real image is formed in the tube at its second focal point the eyepiece magnifies the image producing a final inverted image the magnifying power m is the ratio of the angle beta subtended at the angle by the final image to the angle alpha which the object subtended at the lens or the eye hence m is equivalent to beta divided by alpha equivalent to to s divided by fe into f not divided by h is equal to f not divided by fe in this case the length of telescope tube is f not plus FE terrestrial telescopes have in addition a pair of inverting lenses to make the final image erect refracting telescope can be used both for terrestrial and astronomical observation for example consider a telescope whose objective has a focal length of 100 cm and the eyepiece of a focal length of 100 cm the magnifying power of this telescope is m is equal to 100 divided by 1 is equal to 100 let us consider a pair of stars of actual separation 1 dash 1 minute of the hour the stars appears as true they are separated by an angle of 100 into 1 dash is equal to 100 dash is equal to 1.67 degrees figure 9.29 a refracting telescope The main consideration with an astronomical telescopes are its light gathering power and its resolution or resolving power. The former clearing depends on the area of the objective with larger diameters. Fainter objects can be observed. 
the resolving power or the ability to observe two objects distinctively which are very nearly the same direction also depends on the diameter of the objective so the desirable aim in optical telescope is to make them with objective or flat diameter the largest lens objective in use has a diameter of 40 inch 1.02 meter it is at the x observatory in wisconsin usa such a big lenses tend to be very heavy and therefore difficult to make and support by their edges further it is rather difficult and expensive to make such large size lenses which form images are free from any kind of chromatic abbreviation and distortion for these reasons modern telescope use a concave mirror rather than a lens for the objective telescopes with mirror objectives are called reflecting telescopes there is no chromatic abbreviation in a mirror mechanical support is much less of a problem since a mirror weighs much less than lens of equivalent optical quality and can be supported over its entire back surface not just over its rim one obvious problem with reflecting telescope is that the objective mirror of focuses light inside the telescope tube one must have an eyepiece and the observer light there obstructing some light depending on the size of the observer cage this is what is done in the very large 200 inch 5.08 meter diameter empty palomar telescope california the viewer sits near the focal point of the mirror in a small cage another solution to the problem is to deflect the light being focused by another mirror one such arrangement using a convex secondary mirror to focus the incident light which now passes through a hole in the objective primary mirror is shown in figure 9.30 this is known as a cartesian telescope after its inventor it has the advantages of large focal length in a short telescope the largest telescope in india is in kavalur tamil nadu it is a 2.34 meter diameter reflecting telescope cassie green it was ground polished set up and being used by indian institute of astrophysics bangalore the largest reflecting telescope in the world are the pair of crack telescope in hawaii usa with reflector of 10 meter in diameter Thank you for being till the end. I hope this has helped you. If so, give thumbs up, like, share, comment, save, download and subscribe. You can support us by following in other platforms. That link is in the description. Well, thank you. See you later. Maybe never.